this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Vacation Inspired. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined by Elizabeth and Beth, who will tell us about the recipes. So Elizabeth, tell us what you chose today. Okay, so I went back and forth on this one because for me, I love eating on vacation, but one of like the great joys of it for me is going out and getting things that I don't make at home, you know, regional specialties, whatever. So I was like, okay, what am I going to make that I actually want to make that, you know, I was, you know, I was on vacation earlier this year and I got like a delicious whole octopus. It was so good. I was like, okay, well, I'm not making that anyway. So then I, sorry, I'm just giving some unnecessary background, but lending context. So then I'm actually going on a trip this fall to a bunch of national parks out west um, in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. So I was thinking maybe I would do some like special tacos because a lot of that food down there is, um, you know, straight from Mexico, it's on the border. So all of that, but then I looked back and I have shared like multiple taco recipes and I didn't really feel like I could come up with a good variation that would be different from too different enough from what I've always done. So I went back to the seafood idea. I love seafood on vacation, especially when I'm, you know, in a spot where there's by the ocean. Obviously we are not close to the ocean here in Michigan. So anyway, I went back to seafood and I'm pulling up my recipe here. What I ended up making was a new to me recipe for spicy harissa shrimp in uh, butter. I'm sorry, spicy shrimp and harissa butter. So this was really easy. Um, I really liked this and I'll tell you what you do. So basically you heat some olive oil in a skillet and you add um, some thinly sliced garlic and you just kind of stir it until the slivers are kind of nicely golden. And then you add a half of a very thinly sliced lemon and you season with salt and pepper until the kind of the lemon has also started to frizzle a bit. And then you add to this um, two to four tablespoons of harissa paste, depending on how hot you want the recipe. You let it all cook and then um, you throw in one and a half to two pounds of shrimp. And the author of this suggested that you do shell on shrimp if you can get like those nice big shrimp with the shell on. But she was like, if you don't like if you don't want to deal with that later, you can do peeled shrimp. So that's fine, flexible. Um, so you add in all the shrimp and then two to four tablespoons of butter and you just kind of toss and until the shrimp are coated and all that good stuff. They're a big, nice pink, uh, firmer, four to six minutes, shrimp don't take long. Take them off the heat. You squeeze the other half of the lemon over the shrimp and you kind of toss that to combine. And then you are supposed to serve it with a baguette to kind of sop up the sauce. And you can, um, if you use shell on, you do a little bowl for people to discard their shells. And um, this was so easy, so good, so spicy. Um, I could totally see like sitting on the coast, just enjoying this. And I was really happy I stumbled across this recipe. Uh, I do have a photo here of the shrimp, very good. And um, this is something that I'm gonna make again from time to time, especially, I mean, you do use your stove. So I know some people don't like to do that in the summer, but it's like brief, you know, you're there for maybe 15 minutes and then you can go outside, sit, it's so quick and easy. Um, and yeah, it was really good. That's my, that's my vacation inspired recipe. Well, it sounds like vacation to me. <laughs> so good job. Um, so I'm just curious about the lemon that you add to the pan with the garlic. You don't peel that, right? It's just really, and then I, like, so the peel kind of like gets hard or what happens to it? So for me, I don't know if I did this right. She said it was, the author said it was going to like frizzle a bit, which to me, that means like it kind of crispy. Yeah. Honestly, 
from, like in mine, it just kind of softened and melted a bit. And then there were still, you could still see like kind of pieces of peel when I tossed it all together, which doesn't bother me. I washed my lemon beforehand and then it was really good just, and it's so thinly sliced that it's like, but you know, I don't know if you were cooking for someone who wasn't a big lemon fan, maybe they would kind of eat around those, but it did not get crispy for me. And so when I make it again, Maybe I'll try to let it go a little longer. I don't know. But it may only just basically mostly just kind of disintegrated into the sauce, I would say. Awesome. I bet that's tasty too. So yeah. So um that's that. And let's hear about Beth's vacation inspired recipe. All right. Well. Thank you. That sounded very tasty. Har Harisa isn't something I um I don't have that all the time. It's, I keep meaning to. So, oh, one Thank comment you. about that: it keeps for a long time in the fridge. So if you like, I don't. I hate buying those things where you use like a tablespoon and then you have the whole jar. But it really does keep, and like it's so nice on fish or whatever. Anyway, so yeah. Plus, it's something you can just add to so many things. Oh, absolutely. So it's not a horrible thing to to buy and have around. Okay, so I um. In 2016, we went to Belgium, and in Belgium, it's mussels, mussels, mussels. Um, so I felt like that that I I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that we ate a ton of mussels when we were in Belgium, um, and they're so easy to prepare. I mean, just like your shrimp, God, so easy. And I'll, all right, full disclosure, I didn't make them the when we had them most recently, I've made them before, but I was working at night and we, we just needed to get them cooked. Um, so Kurt made them, but it's super simple. I'm just going to go through my recipe. That is a variation from foodandwine.com. Um, and we also quartered it. This called for four pounds of mussels. We just got one pound for the two of us. Um, so there was just some uh, olive oil, this called for two garlic cloves and one you leave whole if you're going to be following the recipe for their garlic toasts, which I, I just left a link for, but I didn't make it that we didn't make them that way. But anyway, uh, half a small to medium shallot minced salt, pepper, a pound of mussels, half a cup of dry white wine, two tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature, and then um, some coarsely chopped flat parsley. You uh, saute the shallot and garlic, salt and pepper until the garlic's softened. You throw the mussels in there, stirring for one minute. Add the wine, cover and steam until they open about five minutes and then remove them from the heat. Um, you use a slotted spoon to take the mussels to put them in two different bowls. And then you add butter partially to the broth that's in there, swirling it until the butter melts. And then you pour that over the mussels, um, leaving out the, the grit. You know, don't dump the whole thing because it's kind of gritty at the bottom. And that's all. And then you serve it with, like I said, a, a, we, we had a, a baguette, um, but as you'll see, the link goes into a lot of detail about making garlic toast. So uh, yeah, it's, and I also want to say, I, and when we were in Belgium, the restaurants would have like a dozen different variations of this broth. Really, it's all about the broth. I can't even, like, I, I think there were tomatoes in some, maybe other vegetables, you name it. And even I remember at the grocery stores too, when we had like five minutes before the stores were closing, everyone in their carts had muscles. It was just like everyone has muscles. Um, so it's it's really a simple thing to uh serve if you if you like muscles. Um really it takes only minutes. I recommend it. Um, I love muscles. Where do you buy them, Beth? Uh, so we got them at Whole Foods. Okay. Um, All right. But they do have them. Um, they have them um, really everywhere. They have them at Kroger. I just don't know. I don't remember if they're fresh there. But yeah, we, we did get a, 
a pound at Whole Foods. I feel like that's something that like I love to get at restaurants because I it doesn't occur to me to make at home, but you describing it, I'm like, of course I can make that. That's yeah, it's difficult at all, you know. Right. And when we eat them, we ate them, we're like, why don't we get these more often? It's just I mean, shrimp is something like I is on the rotation, you know, but um anyway, so yeah, food for thought and I'd recommend it. So Katie, what kind of vacation inspired thing did you prepare? Well, I, first of all, I just want to second what Elizabeth was saying. Like I love mussels, but I've never made them at home. I think I find them to be like intimidating or something. And the way that you just described it, I'm like, well, come on, I could do that. So feel inspired. Thank you. You're welcome. And you do have to rinse them. They right. say so you have to scrub them, which there's a, might be a beard on it, but um, where that you scrape off. But right. mainly, the thing is, if they don't open, you don't eat them. Don't eat them. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. sorry. Right. I have one more question about this. Beth, you mentioned the like grit because I know when they uh-huh. open, sometimes like there's sand and stuff that comes out. So, what did you say about? Did you just like gently scoop some of the broth out? You just don't dump the whole thing because yeah, it's yeah. Kind of bottom, right? Yep. Yeah. Another thing though, is as you were talking about your lemon, I realized there's no lemon mentioned in this recipe. Um, I'm sure we put lemon on it. So I will add that to it, but it's, it wasn't included, but yeah, you got to have lemon. And yeah. anyone not into lemons, I would sus- suspect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. You go ahead, Katie. All right, here we go. Uh, okay. So my... My vacation uh, that I take most often is to just go up north to our family cabin. And um, the thing that we probably made the most up there is kebabs over our open campfire. It's really easy to do. All you need is a like a grill top, you know, just like a grill grate, basically, to go over top of your fire. And it's like a really, really simple meal, tasty to make. Um, but I've never really made them at home. So I saw this recipe for grilled vegetable kebabs with Romesco sauce. It's from the Mediterranean dish.com. And um, most of the times when I make kebabs with my friends, it's got some sort of meat involved. Like there's veggies, but it's not like super veggie forward. I liked that about this recipe. And I also loved the idea of making a sauce to go with the kebabs. And I've never made romesco sauce before. So this was kind of fun and new for me. And to make your sauce, you take a drained uh, jar of roasted red peppers, a drained can of fire roasted tomatoes, some blanched raw blanched almonds that have been toasted, And then it also calls for some raw blanched hazelnuts that are toasted, but it says they're optional and you can just use almonds instead. Since I already had the almonds, I'm not a huge hazelnut fan, so I didn't want to buy them. Went with that, did it that way. Some parsley, olive oil, salt, paprika, red pepper flakes, some garlic cloves, juice of half a lemon, and then some red wine vinegar. You put that all in your food processor and blend it up and until it's nice and smooth um it comes out this beautiful red color i've got a picture of it like this reddish orange color and i liked it right away but i really liked it the second day the texture sort of smoothed out overnight because it kind of almost still had like some almond chunks even though i blended it really well and that softens out when you leave it overnight so the sauce was really good I ate this not only with the kebabs that I'm about to tell you about, but with chicken and like other random things that I ate while it was in my fridge. So it was really good and versatile. So I definitely recommend that. Um, So the vegetable kebabs, you can use any kind of vegetables for this. Like it's really diverse, but this is what they suggested. Yellow squash or zucchini, baby bello mushrooms, grape tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, And they have this, Brussels sprouts are halved, this really nice tip to microwave the Brussels sprouts for a little bit before you put them on the skewers because it just softens them a little bit, makes it a little easier to do that. That's the same tip I would give for potatoes if you use potatoes on um, a kebab. And then um, a red onion. 
you cut all those things into chunks and you you want to prepare your skewers so if you're using wooden skewers you need to soak them for about 30 minutes beforehand um, because I'm so used to making kebabs over an open flame I found that wooden skewers don't work for me at all it doesn't matter how long I soak them they always catch fire so I've got these skewers that I highly recommend they're metal and you can put um you know two rows of veggies on them and they've got this little sort of handle at the end that makes it really easy to grab with tongs and flip them so love these guys um they're wonderful for kebabs so once you've got your vegetables all chopped up you put them in a bowl add parsley season with salt oregano and pepper uh red pepper flakes add olive oil and lemon juice toss that to combine and you're going to marinate that for about 20 minutes or you can leave it in the refrigerator for several hours either way heat your grill up um and then oh i have a picture of the vegetables in a bowl because they were just like so pretty i had to take a picture they look so good and then um once your gas once your grill is heated so i was doing this on, on my gas grill outside you put your skewers on. I tend to put one kind of vegetable on each skewer because I've learned that if they cook at different temperatures, it's nice to be able to like take the tomatoes off while the Brussels sprouts are still cooking so that they don't overcook. So that's how I did it. But I do think it would be fine if you put them all on the same skewer. You can um, see my picture of them on the grill. And then um, when I remove them from the grill after they're cooked and charred in some parts, I put them on a nice platter. Um, this was so beautiful and tasty. I just loved it. I made this twice in one week and I've got to make it again. This is a wonderful summer recipe and I highly recommend it. That sounds fabulous. My mouth is watering. My mom is a big romesco sauce maker. I am going to tell her your tip though, because my like, it's not even a complaint, but I do feel like the almonds when they're still a little crunchy that first day you make it, the texture is just like a little off. So I think the day before and then having them soften is awesome. Sounds so good. I can't, I just bought a new grill and I am so excited to uh, make skewers on it and have the sauce and all that sounds amazing. Awesome. I'm glad that you had that same experience since I've never made it before. That's like reassuring to me. So great. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes that we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when our category will be dinner in a hurry. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with